Um, hi. So um, one thing that uh, I want to emphasize um, that we talked about um, in the previous slide um, was also regarding this variable argument uh, list, variable length argument list. So once you want to actually um, um, supply an argument list with uh, um, a variable number of uh, arguments, then we can use this uh, standard um, of um, args um, keyword. This keyword actually describes. Uh, um, this is already set in the, in the in the language for a variable length of arguments. So it is read as a list essentially, and then essentially now you can go through the list to understand like each of the arguments and then parse them separately. Uh, so here, this is the example that we saw previously. Uh, so here, the proc name is sum. Which actually um, returns the sum of um, set of integers, um, and then we we don't specify like all the integers uh, separately. We just specify args as the keyword. Um, so inside this proc, we set basically um, the s to zero, and then uh, we can actually parse this uh, args as a list. So for each i dollar args, we just increment S with whatever the value of dollar i, so and then we return that uh, the sum basically s. So here, uh, a simple example: sum one, two, three, four, five. The answer will be fifteen because every time s is incremented by that much, so it's one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Um, if you say um, sum ten, twenty, fifteen. Then you know, the answer will be um, 45, and then if you just say sum without any arguments, then it returns the the zero itself, and that's why we get a zero here. So this uh, kind of um, using a variable length is um, a very useful um, because now we can extend this concept to many other um, things. So um, let's see uh, one. Um, way to extend this concept. Um, so, oftentimes you see in procedures um, you don't want like uh, positional arguments, and you want non-positional arguments. What do I mean by that? So, a positional argument, for example, for this uh, proc, proc name foo, we have an um, argument one, argument two. And it needs to be exactly specified when you call this procedure. If you miss it, then it won't be proper. Um, for example, in this one, it's actually like um, I purposefully wrote this way. So I, I hope you remember this format actually, where um, when you specify a, um, an argument and another value inside the, the braces, um, that is actually the default. If you don't specify, then uh, that's what uh, it takes the value of. So here say like I mean um, arg1 arg2 you need to specify exactly in this order otherwise the, the this function will fail. So now let's look at the non positional argument non positional argument we can say like I mean um, the same thing like in any order only thing is we prepend with arg1 dash arg1 and then give the arg1 and dash arg2 give the dash r, the arg2 you can write like foo R dash R two, and then something some value, and dash R one value two. This is also possible because now it 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 doesn't matter where you specify these values since you are prepending with the R, it knows like what exactly that to put in. So how do we write these kind of um, procedure? Uh, this is one of the curious examples essentially like I mean, this is what you will be seeing more and more in uh, real world problems. Um, so um, the way to do this um, this kind of um, procedure um, is um, as follows. So here a simple example the same um, procedure sum with the keyword arguments now this is as you know it is a list. And this list is essentially like now it will be like this basically like the arg one, arg two, all these things are there. 
So I am assuming that you will be specifying like dash one and the first number and then dash two the second number things like that. Now you can actually um, inside the program you can look for those keywords and then you can mark those things exactly as is here it is a simple increment of uh, S with whatever the next value is but this could be a complex program right here and then once you write this program here and then same thing for each of these um, dollar i values like if it is 2 then do something 3 then do something thing, things like that once you have that and then um, you return actually now you do not have to specify like I mean if we have like say 3 numbers you can specify in any order dash 1 and then first number dash 2 second number dash 3 uh, third number this is one way to specify or you can just say like dash 3 the first number dash 2 second number um, and then uh, dash 1 the third number. So basically like in, in this kind of a method actually the um, um, the um, procedure call itself or the, the way that you specify the um, um, arguments does not matter um, you can get um, actually the results uh, with um, any kind of um, uh, order that uh, you can impose on. Um, so that is mainly like I mean one of the things with this uh, positional and the non positional so you can use this array concept to convert the positional arguments into non positional arguments. Um, And uh, one more thing is here instead of using if you can also use uh, the switch command I hope you remember the switch command uh, the switch command is essentially um, also like doing similar kind of um, thing where you can use like it is it's equivalent to a multiple if uh, command. Um, So um, another uh, application for these kind of uh, this arcs concept is you can use this to also extend um, the procedure to add documentation uh, for example the help commands and uh, also the manual pages you can um, easily extend and um, add those uh, commands into the um, into your uh, ticket procedures. Um, so um, again I think uh, these are like very very um, um, very um, useful and um, um, very uh, helpful um, way to do this uh, basically um, uh, some tickle environments provide like libraries that already contain these um, extensions to add the documentation the help commands uh, for example in the synopsis tickle environment. Um, you get like a couple of things one is um, the parse proc arguments and also procedure um, or proc attributes uh, so once you set that proc attributes that pretty much um, you can use it for describing your help commands and manual uh, pages um, and then the, the proc um, that um, that one is also like fairly simple to use um, essentially. Um, the way to use um, will be um, just um, um, give like um, uh, there are like few fields that you need to describe on the um, the, the, the procedure attributes uh, which can be considered as attributes and then that is what um, will be used to um, uh, process or to um, um, to um, define that attributes so mainly like I mean uh, you can specify um, uh, the procedure the uh, uh, it is the, the command it is also called like define proc attributes and uh, you can specify your procedure name followed by dash info uh, and then that info will have uh, so basically like the define procedure attributes and then um, it will specify you can specify the procedure name 
and then um, you can specify dash info and then you can specify a string which uh, actually contains the information to display and then you can also like do some command groups and um, these command groups can be um, the arguments that you are defining and then here you can also define arguments and then uh, this one will be like I mean, what kind of arguments you could have um, that is args and then um, basically like I mean what is the the help command that will to show and then what kind of uh, uh, type of argument it is and then this you can describe for all of them and then once you have this uh, actually this itself is a group. So once you define this whole thing uh, this um, can be used um, um, as uh, the documentation so once uh, uh, um, anyone like I mean wants to write the uh, um, write in uh, the help procedure or um, um, any type of um, arguments um, or um, any type of help procedure or the manual pages they can use this command to describe that and then uh, it will be it will be together with the procedure usually you have the procedure um, you write the procedure basically with the body and then at the end you will add the procedure attributes. And then once you have the attributes, then now the tickle interpreter can actually take the whole thing and then pass it. And uh, in if you are just calling the procedure dash help, it will display the help information from the different block attributes. So um, I think uh, this is um, this is another way, like I mean uh, another e uh, learning uh, thing. Um, so I want to also like um, give you the the basic rules in uh, tickle and then um, basically like I mean um, this will give you a good uh, framework when you start doing your uh, tickle programming. So rule number one uh, this we saw earlier white space separates command name and uh, each of the arguments. Um, so um, and when we do the commands essentially like it is command then followed by white space then R1 space R2 etc etc. So um, this is one thing that uh, I want you to understand um, and then the um, The other thing is also like I mean new lines and the semicolon separate commands. So you have command one, which is um, all of these arguments, and then command two will be in the next line. Or you can say command one, and then semicolon, and then command two. So now uh, the question is um, if one of these arguments itself has a blank space then um, how do we um, uh, or, or a new line how do we uh, um, how do you write that. So in that case essentially like I mean we need to use the grouping um, so the grouping is essentially through the quotes or through uh, the the braces. So now uh, let's see, like I mean, how that is done. So that comes to the tickle uh, rule number two. Uh, the rule number two is on grouping. So um, number one is this um, curly braces. This prevents all substitutions by tickle interpreter. So these two are. Um, very important prevents substitutions and tickle interpreter. So as uh, you recall um, the way that tickle is uh, done is we have the tickle interpreter and then followed by parcel. 
So all the commands first go through the tickle interpreter. It is uh, interpreted into like multiple words, and then that is sent to the parser, and then the parser actually understands uh, what the command is, and then what is needed for that command. So um, one thing to note is essentially like I mean uh, this uh, once you start the group with the brace, it groups all characters until a matching. Um, uh, another brace is found, um, and it also like prevents all the substitution. So, like now, let's look at this particular command. While we started the brace, as you know, like the while has um, um, two arguments. This is argument one, argument two. The one is usually a condition, and then argument two is the body. So, this condition we say basically like expression um, dollar i plus dollar j less than or equal to ten. Then do this. While this is less than ten, keep doing this body. Do you think this program will work? Why or why not? So here you look at this one. Basically, there is a command substitution right here. And since we are using the curly brace, this prevents all the command substitution. So that means that once this is passed to the while loop, while while is passed into the tickle interpreter. It does not return anything. It just returns this whole thing. Um, so this will not work. You need to actually like do this separately and then put it inside. Um, so that's uh, one of the rules. So now um, let's go to um, rule number three. Rule number three is essentially like I mean uh, use um, the quotes for weak grouping. Here substitutions are allowed by the tickle interpreter. It groups all characters until a matching quote is found. One thing to note is there is no nesting of quotes, so you cannot say like quote um, and start something like I mean some dollar. X plus then you get another start and then uh, Y and then end this. This does not work because up to here it is taken as one and then this quote and quote is taken as the next one. So your dollar Y is left with nothing. So the nesting does not work in uh, these kind of rules. So this is another key thing that uh, I want you to. Um, Keep in mind. Now let's look at the next rule. Um, the next rule is the backslash uh, substitution. Um, this is used to quote special characters essentially. So here you can see one uh, interesting program. A while foo, you have a command arg one, arg two, return, and here you see that basically like the uh, new line is actually escaped with this um, this backslash so backslash and then the new line so what do you think this will happen so this when it executes this command this this backslash and the new line is uh, replaced with just a blank space so this is as good as saying command r1 r2 space r2 so that's how this will work, and then you can see that actually, like for the when we start the curly braces, we don't use a escape new line. Essentially, the the reason for this is uh, once you start the the braces, the command interpreter groups everything in, inside um, that uh, yeah, inside the two braces, or basically like it groups everything until the matching brace is formed. So that means that basically these are automatically grouped into a single argument. So we don't have to really do anything for that. And then here the tricky part is basically like the command interpreter may group everything and then sends it to the parser and then the parser first of all understands the command and basically like that it, it knows that it has two arguments it completes that command and then it also sends this thing back to the interpreter. Which is basically a return command to return the value. So this is 
the um, the backslash substitution. Now the rule number five is uh, the variable substitution. Um, we saw this also, like I mean, in the first lecture or the second lecture, actually. Um, the dollar causes the variable substitution, um, and here the dollar and the variable name are replaced by the value of the variable. So whenever you say like dollar x, and then it it finds what is the value of this x, and then it replaces dollar x with the actual value. Um, And then uh, finally, the rule number six is the command substitution rule. Here, um, essentially, we use the the square brackets to delimit the command. Um, one thing to note in uh, command substitution is nesting of commands are okay. Um, and then everything, including the square brackets, is replaced by the command return value. So this is another key thing, uh, key learning uh, from this one. So um, you can use um, uh, this kind of uh, method to um, actually um, do the command substitution and then the command replacement. Um, so in summary, essentially, like I mean, you need to understand these uh, six rules. Um, so in this module, actually, we went through quite a bit of uh, uh, tickle. Uh, mainly we started describing the procedures um, I think um, you have the basic understanding of the procedure where we define the keyword proc and then um, we used uh, the procedure name followed by the list of arguments and then uh, then the procedure body. So there are three um, uh, param params for the, the proc, proc command itself um, and then once the Procedure is defined, then they just behave like built in commands. For example, you can say like sub 1, 3 will return value 2, um, and again, um, or sub 1 of uh, 3. Sorry, this is the sub 1 is the procedure name, and then the 3 is the argument here, and then sub 1 of 3 returns 2 because it basically like subtract 3 from whatever I mean, 1 from that argument and that returns the value. Then uh, the other thing that we also saw was uh, the arguments can have default values for example here decrement x and then y, uh, y is the another argument so it's usually like x minus y but the default value of that y is 1. So if you do not specify only like decrement um, 5 then the answer will be 4, if you say decrement sorry dcr 5 4 then the answer is 1. So, because like the default value for the second operator is always one in this particular um, proc. So this way, like you can define multiple uh, default conditions. So this is the first thing that we saw. Um, here we saw like a quick uh, example of um, the problem and how it can um, it will um, work or not work. Um, and then we started defining the scope because um, we need to set the scope um, and then if you use the variable inside a procedure you need to have explicitly the scope uh, from outside. So the way to uh, give the scope to the variable is by using this um, keyword global and then the global needs to be specified inside the procedure in order to get um, the uh, transfer from outside. Into, into the procedure. Uh, one thing to note is uh, if you do not set this um, x and you are just using the global x it still does not work you need to the the global itself does not set anything for x so that is another key thing. Um, so you need to have that variable set outside then you can use global to transfer that value into the procedure.
so then um, uh, essentially so that that is what is uh, shown here essentially so here um, the just by specifying like dollar warning does not mean that basically like it, it will get transferred you need to make sure that it is defined somewhere else and then you can use that uh, inside this. And then um, there are two other commands essentially like upwar and level um, they can they help you to pass some um, um, the, the, the names by reference. Um, so here one quick example is increment uh, var name up var 1 var name and this is uh, var. So what, what you can do is basically like now and then uh, the and then we are actually like set the var to dollar var plus 1. So now what happens is actually like I mean you can actually communicate this back to another place where this var is getting called. And then this one here denotes the level basically up to where you can actually like send to send this um, variable. So here um, um, var is only sent to the procedure that is outside of this. Um, and then um, if you want it to be even higher, then you need to increment this one to two and things like that. So that's the level naming essentially. Um, and then up level is a similar kind of um, uh, thing only for um, uh, used for um, sending scripts from one level to the next level. So and then uh, we saw this uh, variable length uh, procedure and then uh, we also uh, noted like um, how we can use this uh, for the um, both um, um, you know defining the positional um, arguments as well as non positional arguments. So, how do we do this? Uh, this is something that we saw, and in this sim simple example, actually, uh, we can go into more details. Um, so, and then, then we also like had some simple examples to denote those um, things, and we saw like how we can document these procedures. Um, and then we also covered some um, uh, little bit of error handling um, as to what kind of uh, what is the error info uh, and things like that essentially. Um, so we can use this error info to and then we can uh, um, keep track of what is going on basically. Um, so with that I am also like I want to give you like some coding guidelines as to what you can do. Um, um, so here a uh, couple of things that uh, you want to make sure one is always use comments to match closing braces. So, because the braces are quite important, so like when you close any brace, make sure that you put that command um, out, out there so that um, whoever is reading they know that they have to close the commands. The other one is uh, need to add you can add the echo commands wherever possible. So, this also helps to uh, provide some feedback, and that by that uh, people will understand. Uh, what you are trying to do and what is actually printed out in those uh, commands uh, in the commands. Then make sure that uh, uh, you test uh, your code in small chunks and then always use this error info that is what we saw in the, uh, the debugging uh, procedure. And then uh, finally we also saw like the six rules for um, effective uh, tickle uh, coding. Uh, the rule number one is to understand the concept of white space which separates the command name and all the arguments um, and then the new lines and the semicolon separate commands uh, so this is a very simple one just uh, understand this one and then the rule number two is that grouping um, essentially the curly braces which prevents all the substitutions by tickle interpreter so here the key thing is also this tickle interpreter that uh, I mentioned. Um, and then uh, for the soft grouping 
essentially use the uh, quotes or sound grouping this actually um, um, substitutes all the variables um, essentially and but there is no nesting of the quotes um, also the rule number 5 is to use the backslash uh, substitution um, so how that works uh, that is the key thing here um, you can review this one. And then uh, actually sorry this is the rule number 4 this should be rule number 4 and then uh, rule number 5 is the variable substitution uh, which is uh, by using the dollar uh, here the variable is uh, whenever um, we specify the variable name with the dollar that variable name is replaced by the value of the variable. And then finally the last rule is uh, the command substitution which is using the square brackets um, and the square brackets delimit the command. Here we can nest uh, multiple commands essentially that means that we can start like this x x v r and then blah 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 and then start another one um, o and then o two blah, blah blah and then we can close all of them. So this is allowed this, this thing is allowed. Um, so I think uh, this uh, basically um, as uh, most of the basic tickle um, programming is all covered in these modules. Uh, we will look at some of the advanced concepts uh, from tickle in, uh, in the next uh, lecture and then after that we will uh, start looking into TK as um, uh, the next one uh, okay uh, thank you very much uh, bye.